Habakkuk 2.2 tells us that we should write the vision, that we should make it plain, that we shouldn't beat around the point, we shouldn't obfuscate, we shouldn't be fearful, we shouldn't cower, but we should put it out there. We should make it plain, be bold, be courageous. Because the Bible says when you do that, that people who read it begin to run with it. And you know, this is Vision Sunday around here. And normally uh, here to rise, our Vision Sunday is earlier in our calendar year. But because of the COVID lockdown, we delayed it until now. But you know what? I just think that in the middle of our uncertain world, where everything is tumultuous, where so many things are uncertain, I am grateful for a God whose promises are ever sure, whose power is ever great, who is not limited by man's ability, our human resources, but is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask him, think or imagine. Anybody else believe that? Come on, if you believe that every campus, why don't you give your God some praise? Because this is Vision Sunday. This is Vision Sunday. So right now, I want to pray as we begin this service, and I'm praying no matter where you are, you might have been part of a Rise Church for a week, a month, a year, or some people up to, you know, 10, 15 years. I'm praying that right now, as we begin to open our hearts to vision, God is just going to do something amazing in your life, in your life, that as you hear vision, you would come alive, that as you hear vision, you'd be filled with energy, that, you know, we got so many pressures in our world right now, that means we need more presence of God-centered vision than ever before. God doesn't want you conforming to circumstantial pressure, doesn't want you being molded by your environment. God wants you conforming every situation that you face, every circumstance you encounter. All difficulty that you meet should be conformed to the truth of God's Word, the promise of His character. And I believe God's about to do something amazing in this place. Anybody? Oh, come on, we're just getting started, but I feel like we just, we just need to get ready for God to do something amazing. Come on, there are people literally already standing to their feet. How about from Whangarei to Dunedin, everywhere in between, we give God about five seconds of praise that our God is able. Come on, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. All right, come on, let's pray, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we uh, begin to share vision today, I'm just praying. Let the waves of pressure that have been coming to us in this season roll back. May we discover the God of so much more. May hearts come alive with vision. May a rise church be filled with unity around a God-centered vision. You've called us to dream again. That's what we began to prophesy in the middle of the COVID lockdown. That you have called us to dream again. And I pray that somebody would do that today. Where we're, we're environments and pressures and moments have let blinkers come on and restriction come around, I pray that you would break us free to see so much more. Encourage every despondent heart. Breathe on dreams that are within the hearts of your people. Call people today. Call them to ministry. Call them to service. Call them to life. Call them to freedom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen, amen, and amen. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 from the Passion Translation, talking to us about our God declares this, He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and He will exceed your wildest imagination. Anybody love that verse? He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and He will exceed, not underperform, not underwhelm, but our God will exceed your wildest imagination. We worship a God who can do more than we can dream, who invites us to imagine. God never pours water on dreams. He fuels dreams. He invites His people to imagine. He says to us, arise, imagine. See the world not as it is, but as it could be. See your potential not based on your previous experiences, but on the might and the power of God that is available to each and every one of us. Imagine. Create a picture of a preferable 
future. Imagine. Imagination is essential to the pathway of faith in our lives. Do you know that? We understand that as we begin to imagine and we see the world not as it is, but as it could be. As we open up our spirit to see this is not just my present reality and my life will conform to that. But as I begin to say, imagine, imagine, imagine if people could know Jesus. Imagine if the church could be on the forefront of the conversation. Imagine if everybody in my community held up the church as a place to go in moments where you need hope, where you need promise. That imagination, as it begins to grow on the inside of me, gives birth to hope. I begin to hope in a better world. And hope is essential to faith. Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the substance of things that we hope for. So if we don't imagine, we don't start hoping. If we don't hope, then we don't have faith. And so I'm praying today that your imagination is gonna be inspired. That you're gonna see the God of so much more. Because imagination, dreams, a belief in something bigger, these should be the hallmarks of our Christian faith. Arise as a church that is synonymous with the dream. We began 17 years ago with the dream. Looking back, it was a small dream. We dreamed that we could build a church that would break through in the city of Wellington, where there'd never been a church with over a thousand people. In the physical auditorium I'm preaching in right now, there might be a thousand people in the auditorium, let alone the children's programs. But that was never done, never been dreamed of, never, never accomplished. To build a church that would have campuses in other cities throughout the country. The truth is the first few years of that dream, it did feel like we were trying to push the boulder uphill. But then God began to breathe on it. And suddenly, this dream, this dream that had seemed so out there, so preposterous, so, so audacious, started to take shape before our eyes. And as that dream became a reality and started to become something we could see, we began to dream again. We started to ask new what-if questions. Like, if this dream was tracking towards a present reality, then what, a, what else is our God able to do? We started to ask new what if questions. What if it wasn't just a church in a few cities around the country? What if we could build a church that was in every city in the country? What if the church wasn't just present in Sunday gatherings where people had to come to, but what if that church was able to touch people no matter where they were? What if it wasn't just five or 10 locations, but what if it was 50 or 100 or 1,000? What if we could build a church that was no longer just limited to the thought that the church was a building, but what if that church also incorporated online expressions and began to reach people all across our nation and in the nations of the world? Out of that, out of those new what of questions, our new period of imagination, we began to grab a hold here at Arise of a second dream. We had one dream, but then we grabbed the hold of a second dream. Five years ago, we had a landmark Sunday in Arise Church, our Vision Sunday, where we began to declare for our church family our new dream. Really what we did, if I can be honest with you, is we let go of one dream and we grabbed the hold of another. We traded success in one paradigm for infancy in another. We began to say no longer were we gonna lord our success according to this criterion, but we were now going to embrace the deficiencies, the urgency, the need, the pressure, the, the welcome journey towards a horizon that was so much greater than we'd ever surveyed before. We launched that dream with a lot of fanfare and excitement, but the truth was that as we launched it, we were launching our church into a whole new journey. We were grabbing a hold of a whole new journey. We were declaring a brand new day over Arise. A dream for a national revival, a dream for a church that was bigger than anything we'd ever seen before. An influence in our nation that had perhaps never been achieved before. And I wanna tell you the urgency of our dream around here at Arise has always come from the fact that we believe that Jesus is the hope of the world. And the local church is his vehicle through which he brings that hope. So if we don't have a dream for the local church, we are denying our nation 
of the access they need to the God of hope. Yeah. Embracing this new dream called us to new sacrifice. It said we have, to, we have to give up things we love for things we love even more. But as we began on that journey, God breathed. And today, I want to show you the, vi the video that we played to announce our 10-year vision five years ago. As we stand this Vision Sunday at the halfway point, I want you to hear what we declared we were going to achieve over 10 years because we're right now at the halfway juncture. And I pray you're inspired to see how far we've come. And I also pray that you're inspired to believe that we can complete the entire journey. So check this video out today. Every person was created by a loving God and designed for a personal relationship with Him. And the church is Christ's body, designed by God to present the message of the gospel to the world around us. We believe it is within our grasp to build a church that will present that loving God and a personal relationship with Him to every New Zealander today. The church that we see in our future is one with campuses everywhere, one with small groups covering an entire nation, a church that is mobilizing believers, multiplying disciples, raising a new generation of leaders, rapidly expanding, increasing in influence, and reaching a nation for Jesus. A church that gives voice to our faith to an entire nation of people. see a church for everyone everywhere a church without walls a church not bound by geography a church that never sleeps a church that is connected accessible and available a church that utilizes technology and social media to connect believers together no matter where they might be the old model of church said come to us we're building a new model of church that says we come to you through live streaming, 
online campuses and an ever-expanding number of life groups, no longer limited by geography. We now view every hall, every movie theater, every prison, university hostel, and every home in New Zealand as an opportunity to present an Arise environment and to reach people for Christ. We want to build a church that will see life to every spirit, love to every heart. We see a church that empowers believers to reach their world for Jesus. A church that enables believers to represent Jesus in every city and town in our nation. No city too large, no town too small. A church that resources life group leaders, creates mature followers of Jesus and grows the body of Christ. A church made possible by the gifts and talents of thousands who contribute together for the mission of the gospel. A training center that disciples a new generation of leaders, pastors and ministers for the nation of New Zealand and beyond. An equipper of local churches everywhere. A church that presents the message of Christ to New Zealand. We see a church of exponential increase. We want to build a church that is a defier of boundaries, limits, and norms. We want to remove all barriers, remove all obstacles to exponential growth. So much of our work over the last few years has been to create a template that allows the church to grow without ceasing, a model that allows us to reach people wherever they are we will utilize modern mediums of communication to enable us to reach people faster and on a broader scale than has ever been imagined before. We see life groups that never stop growing, never stop multiplying. We see church services that are easy to reproduce in new locations. We see campus launch teams preparing to launch new campuses up and down this nation. We see a move of God that reaches hundreds of thousands with the gospel. We see unstoppable momentum as a new generation is one to Christ. We see a church of innovation, a church that moves, changes, tries new things, a church that utilizes technology, a church undaunted by societal change, one that maximizes new opportunities to present an unchanging gospel in an ever-changing world, a leader in reaching a new generation for Christ. We see a church of influence, one that is heard of, known across New Zealand as a place where Jesus is lifted high and people are highly valued. A church large enough to give voice to the gospel to our nation and personal enough to heal every broken heart. New campuses for us are about multiplied hubs of activity from which people can be reached for Christ. Our internship school is about discipling a new generation of leaders, ministers and pastors for the Church of New Zealand and beyond. Multiplying life groups is about increasing nucleuses of community, not just within existing campuses, but all across a nation, creating an environment where people can do life with other believers, be discipled in a relational way, and reach the world for Christ. One person, one leader, one life group, one campus at a time, we will build a church of influence that will touch a nation for God. We see a church of social action. We have a heart for the broken, for the young, for those in need. We will build a church known for good deeds, for helping those in need. A church that cares for the poor, that feeds the hungry. A church that lifts people up and doesn't push them down. A church that offers answers and assistance instead of leveling blame and finding fault. An army of volunteers serving the needs of their community will communicate the authenticity of our message. God is love and every person is loved by Him. 
We see a church with a unique voice and sound. Through music, media, and film, we see a unique voice coming from our church to the nations of the world. A sound of worship that exalts Jesus and ushers in His presence. Songs that give voice to the spirit of our house. Television programs, albums, videos, films being created within our church that build the church globally, give voice to evangelism, and frame the message of the gospel for everyday New Zealanders. We see a church of unity, a testimony to the limitless potential found when believers partner together as one. A church where every member is part of a united purpose, a common goal. A church of surrendered vessels, lives given for the cause of Christ. A church rallied around a common vision. A church that unifies people of every age and race. We are gripped by a great purpose, compelled by a heavenly vision. We see a new horizon. Our goal is expansion, not consolidation increase and not improvement, revival, not religion, influence and not comfort. We will take courageous steps of faith. We will trust God and claim His promises. We will reach for something new. We stand together at an amazing moment in time. God is calling us forward. Jesus promised, when I am lifted up, I will draw all men. Our mandate is to build a church that will lift up the name of Jesus across a nation and around the world. A church that will cover Aotearoa in revival fire, sweep a new generation into the kingdom of God and exalt the name of Jesus in our time. This is our calling, our passion, our purpose, our declaration, our goal, our horizon. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, Rise, this is the journey that we're on. This is the mandate God has given to us. This is our courageous goal. Anybody believe we can build that kind of church? I believe it with all my heart. This is the kind of church we are trying to become. And maybe you've been on this journey with us here to Rise only for a short period of time. Well, I want to welcome you to be a dreamer with us. I want to welcome you to be part of this journey together. As you can already see from that video, we have come a long way since we began this declaration five years ago. But we have a long way to go. Today, we stand at this halfway juncture. And on this amazing halfway moment, we give a poverty to that church. We say, come to us. We want to be the kind of church that is going to have that kind of impact in Aotearoa. We believe New Zealand needs the church vibrant and strong. We want to be a defier of boundaries, limits, and norms. We refuse the notion that the church is for yesteryear. We believe that Jesus is the hope of the world. If you believe that, I need a hearty amen from Whangarei to Dunedin. We're building a church for a national revival. We're building a church that will raise a new generation of leaders. We want to see the age of pastors in our country getting younger, not older. We want a viable expression of the church in every city and town in all of New Zealand. We want to usher in the greatest days for the church in the history of Aotearoa. We are unashamedly attempting to change a nation for God. When we launched this vision five years ago, this stream five years ago, the truth is it was radical. I think for many in our church family, it was kind of like they heard it, but truly struggled to receive it. It also meant for us as a church family that it was no longer a vision that was primarily primarily centered around me. I wanna say it again, we had to give up things we love for things we love even more. Arise, the only way that the church keeps moving forward is if we, the church, we arise, care more about the lost and the broken, care more about the one than the 99. 
care more about reaching our nation than we do about our own comfort as the church. We launched this vision with such excitement. There was such a spirit of faith. Communicating the dream was exciting and everybody kind of rallied around it to a large degree. The truth was though, that it was a dream for us that didn't have a tangible expression. Every time a rise came under pressure, every time people were confronted with the need to change for the vision, our reflex and our impulse was towards the old model of church than towards the new. It would be easy for us to govern our decisions, to make our decisions as a rise, simply around improving what we already have. Because we love what we already have. But we've just been sensing the Holy Spirit calling to us as a rise, saying it cannot be just about the betterment of what is. Just about a greater degree of creature comforts as we enjoy our arise expression. If we close our vision to just, well, we are arise and we enjoy our church, we could shut our doors to the tremendous need that our nation has for the church to be vibrant and strong. And so we've been communicating a church vision that calls for new sacrifice, a dream that is about more than what we have right now. We launched the stream and then as we should have expected and as we've been covering over our dream series, really I think the moment that we put that dream out there and gave voice to it as Joseph did, Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Our church beginning in 2015 experienced what we now recognize as a long season of spiritual attack. The church did flourish. We built the Arise Center. We started new campuses. We grew to, un we grew to unprecedented numbers within our church, saw people come to Christ. But behind it all, those first few years of this 10-year dream were tremendously difficult. We had disunity within our church for the very first time. We broke ground in the Arise Center 10 days later. I nearly suffered brain damage as I was hit off my bicycle by a car, fractured skull, cracked ribs, all that. My wife got diagnosed with a disease they said was incurable, and then the Lord really did a powerful healing work in her life. Many of our staff members suffered tremendous seasons of just being disheartened, anxiety. We had to work our way through their own mental health. And what we now realize looking back on that journey was that the moment we put that dream out there for the Lord to hear, for the world to hear, we also gave the reality that we were now a heightened threat. That the kingdom of darkness was not gonna surrender this nation easily. But I wanna tell you church that we did two things in the middle of those years of difficulty and adversity. And years where God did so many good things but we prayed and we fasted like a church, as a church, more than we've ever prayed and fasted before. And secondly, we got busy. We began working on this dream, began building our church for this dream. We didn't cower in the face of intimidation. And I wanna tell everybody out there who's got a God dream in your heart, if you've ever encountered difficulty, ever felt like the devil's taken the legs out from under you as you've attempted to do something great for God, the devil cannot get bigger, but you can. Yeah. And because Jesus is on the inside of you, there is more power available to the church than any principality, power, or demon can ever bring against the church. Our God is for us. Our God is greater. Our God is able. And I believe in a triumphant church, a victorious church. Am I talking to anybody out there? I need about 10 seconds of praise all across this country. Let's lift a shout of victory. Our God is greater. Our God is able. Our God is on our side. Jesus is building His church. The gates of hell will not prevail against the army of God's people. If you believe it, give your God about 10 seconds of praise once more. Come on, our God is bigger. Our God is bigger. I took, the, I took the text of that 10 year dream and I put it on my office wall. Every morning I came in, I read it out, out loud in my office. I shut the door, I prayed over it. As a church, we got more familiar with it. We began to understand it. It was still so far in the horizon, but we were welcoming it. How am I come dream? Come to the here and now. We began to make new decisions that weren't in line just with what we had, but where we were going. We built a new 
team of staff in Arise Church devoted simply to resourcing and multiplication. You have to understand that we are believing that we can build the kind of church where it's not just going to better Arise, but that we can better every church. That if we can find a church in a town with a decaying number of congregants, that we can come in and say, listen, you still believe in Jesus. Let's help you to now represent Jesus. We don't care whether our name is over the door. We care that the name of Jesus is lifted high. We want a new generation of New Zealanders to be raised knowing the truth of God's Word. We want every child to know that God has a plan for them. We want every teenager without any shadow of a doubt that they have a reason to live, a God-given identity, that they are special, called, chosen, and God has a purpose for their life. We doubled the number of our life groups. We created Pathway. We began to breathe upon the Arise team, which is now over 3,000 people a month, giving 10,000 volunteer hours to benefit our community. We are now a church that is able to do more than we ever dreamed we could do when we first launched this vision. We launched our online campus in line with our new dream, not realizing that with the COVID pandemic, how central that would become to the impact that our church was able to bring. And now our online campus is the largest campus of Arise Church. Can you give God some praise for that? We celebrate the number of people in our auditoriums this morning, but more people will experience Arise outside of any of our gatherings than will be in any of our auditoriums throughout New Zealand. God has taken us so far in this journey. And after we've been walking through that season of difficulty, suddenly, about two and a half years ago, everything began to change. Yeah. We've been fighting for the dream, praying for the dream, building for the dream, yeah. and then suddenly everything began to move. Yeah. It was like the church just suddenly accelerated. Yeah. Yeah. We began to see growth, 19%, 20%. We started to see new leaders just explode absolutely everywhere. The lights came on. Yeah. The attack was over and a new day was born. Yeah. The amazing thing about for Arise Church right now is that we are now a church completely aligned with our dream. All of our programs, all of our activities, our budget, our plans, and every member of our staff are all aligned in one direction. That we are gonna build a church that will usher in the greatest days for the church in the history of Aotearoa. We are building a church for the future. Beginning in two, at the beginning of 2019 on a prayer retreat, the Lord began to speak to me and He said, I'm gonna bring over Arise Church a second wave. A second wave. And I was so inspired because our first dream was one wave. But the Lord was declaring over Arise that what He did with our first dream, He was gonna do again. What we had seen Him already do, He was gonna do it again. A second wave carried by sons and daughters that I would have the great privilege and honor of fathering a group of ministers that were together gonna see New Zealand covered, not just one city with a breakthrough, but every city, every town, every environment of our country to be in a state of revival that God would breathe upon our nation. And the truth is arise that what the Lord has done over the last 18 months of our journey has been nothing short of miraculous. New leaders are emerging everywhere. Our church is filled with fresh life. We are beginning more locations now than we have ever done. Even in the face of the COVID pandemic, our church flourished. Our dream allowed us to navigate COVID's challenges and to truly thrive. We have proved our church vision to be resilient, relevant, and effective. No physical services because of a COVID lockdown, no problem, we're already ready. Let's go online. Not able to meet with our life groups in physical reality, we already have life groups online. A church that is unable to have physical gatherings, not a problem. Changes need to be made. Well, we already know where we wanna be in 10 years time, so let's make those changes to line up with that large, that reality. And the truth is before COVID, the largest number of people that had ever attended an Easter Sunday church service at Arise was 12,000 people. This Easter Sunday, because of our dream, 72,000 people were part of our Easter services 
as we took the truth of God's Word into every home, every smartphone, every lounge room across New Zealand. I want you to give God about 10 seconds of praise because the name of Jesus is truly being lifted high. Our God is working in wonders. We are now one church in 12 different locations every weekend. We have nine campuses, two of what we call locals, and our online campus that is now our largest. Arise Locals were born in the crucible of the COVID pandemic, but the truth is we had already been getting ready for locals for many years. We've been preparing behind the scenes, but COVID launched it into reality as we were adapting to the fact that we couldn't have gatherings of over 100. But now we have a medium. We have, we have Arise Locals meeting today in Rolleston in the Selwyn District just outside of Canterbury. We, that's where my parents go to church, by the way. We also have one meeting in the town of Whanganui and with 10 volunteers, a video projector and an auditorium. We have children's programs from one year old to 10 years old. We have a church service that is filled with dynamic praise and worship. Per head of capita, more people are getting saved in Arise Locals than in Arise Campuses right now. We are winning people to Jesus. Let me just tell you something, Arise. We've got two, but the two's gonna be 10. The 10 is gonna be 50, and the 50 is gonna become 100. Whether it be in Tiawamutu Te or Cambridge, whether it be in Masterton or Levin, we are gonna cover New Zealand with a relevant, dynamic, engaging, life-giving, soul-winning expression of the church. New Zealand is going to know the hope of the gospel. Our Jesus is the hope of the world. We're getting ready to change a nation for Jesus. If you believe it, give your God about another five seconds of praise. Come on, our God is good. Arise Care has exploded. Five years ago, we declared the dream of Arise Care. I think it was late last year we celebrated the fact that we had now given 100,000 children breakfast through Arise Care. 2021, we will start an annual delivery of 100,000 breakfasts per year in 2021. It took us four years to do the first 100,000. Now it's an annual reality. We are literally meeting the needs of every refugee arriving in the nation of New Zealand. Our storehouse has empowered us to give away hundreds of thousands of meals in the face of the COVID lockdown. We were able to reach more people than ever before. We now have eight prison services a month that our church is, ho is housing. And by the way, we want it to go to eight a week, then 30 a month and on and on and on as we are, New Zealand prison ministry cannot go backward and it is right now. But we raised up a rise kid to say that we're bringing the truth of the gospel to people who are in desperate need of a second chance in our nation. Our worship ministry has absolutely exploded with new songs and creativity, a unique sound and voice. This is the church that we are building. God spoke to me in prayer about seven years ago and he told me, John, every move of God has a sound. The Salvation Army created contemporary Christian music. John Wesley started 10,000 churches. His brother Charles wrote 10,000 songs. And God told me for us to have a move of God, we, we need a unique voice and sound that will match the spirit of what God is doing. Right now, nearly every song we sing in our church has been written by our songwriters. We have a new album that will be coming out early 2021. God is breathing upon our church in the most amazing way. And I believe the next album we release will be our greatest so far. Our first one became the number one album sold in New Zealand and the number one song on the secular charts in New Zealand. But I'm praying again that the name of Jesus is going to be exalted through creativity and relevancy and we will declare the truth of God once again in our time. Our ministry school is now producing a new generation of leaders. Through our ministry school, we are training up more leaders than we have ever done before. And let's be unashamed. The reason for these leaders is so that we can build a church that will repopulate Christianity in our nation. For our ever increasing number of locals and campuses, we're needing a new generation of leaders. 
I actually believe and I felt the Holy Spirit tell me to tell you in prayer this week that there are people in the service who have not signed up for our ministry school evening stream in the second semester of this year. It's only week two. We've had two weeks. I need you to sign up after the service and join in for week three because we need you. The Lord needs you. God is breathing on you. You're not bound by your past. You're not limited by yesterday's mistakes. You're not defined by your present. But God's putting a dream on the inside of you to serve Him because you're mighty through God and you're gonna be used by Him greatly to change the world. Uh, our evening stream is now expanding. It's entirely online and through our evening stream of our ministry school, we're now discipling leaders where we do not have Arise campuses in nations of the world. We have several people in our ministry school now in the nation of the Philippines. We have people from the United Kingdom who are part of our ministry school every week and the Lord is breathing on it. We have a crazy goal. We're halfway. Five years in, five years to go. Here's our crazy goal. I need you to hear this and just say that this is your pastor, believing in the greatness of God, putting something audacious out there, hoping that the Lord is gonna breathe upon it. In five years time, we wanna be in a position as a church where the key church buildings that we need in key cities of our nation will be both built and paid for. So that as we complete 10 years, we wanna be a church that never stops growing. That's our belief. The easiest way for us to stop growing is to be encumbered by debt. So we wanna to get to a point where in five years time, they're not only built, but they're paid for. So that as we continue to start, like we will, more campuses up and down this nation and to the nations of the world, we're using surpluses because we're not renting anymore, we own them. And we're using the giving from the expansion offerings to empower us to just build the new buildings every year without the need to slow down because we are encumbered by debt. That's our crazy audacious dream. It's a dream that we believe has a possibility to flourish. In four weeks time, we're gonna receive our expansion offering and that expansion offering is gonna help us to make that dream a reality to expand Arise Care, to build these campus buildings and to launch Arise in Auckland. Can we have some praise for Arise in Auckland right now? Next year, we will begin services for Arise in Auckland. We already have six life groups gathering at the moment and it is literally growing all the time. Auckland is now a city of 1.7 million people. When I left it to Pioneer Arise, it had one million. It has grown in the last 15 years by one and a half times the population of Wellington or Christchurch. And the truth is, the five largest churches in Auckland 15 years ago are the same five largest now. They're all great, we, we love every single one of them, thus. they're our best friends, honestly. But the truth is, we're going to Auckland saying, if there's 700,000 new people, there needs to be new churches. We wanna be number six. We wanna be right there in the middle of this key city, lifting up the name of Jesus. Not just one campus, but many campuses in Auckland. Like we need more than one campus in Wellington, more than one campus in Christchurch. We are gonna see a day when there is a life group within walking distance of every home in Aotearoa, a campus within 20 minutes drive of every home in a metropolitan area. We are building a church that is gonna touch Aotearoa for God. In the next few years, we're gonna begin launching campuses internationally as well. Reaching beyond the shores of New Zealand and seeing the same journey. One campus in a new nation becomes many campuses in a new nation. I want you to give God about five seconds of praise in every location. Church, I want you to get ready. I want you to buckle your seatbelt. We're not talking about a church that is just made up of one people or a few people. Arise is not my church. Arise is not our staff's church, our board's church, our leadership team church. Arise belongs to you. Arise belongs to each and every one of us. We are the church. You are the church. And together we have proved that our God can use the least 
the smallest, the insignificant, the leftover to accomplish more than anybody could ever ask or dream or imagine. The power of God at work within you has the ability to change the story of New Zealand. Come on, our God is greater than every foe that you face, every obstacle in our way. Jesus is greater than P, greater, Jesus is greater than gangs, Jesus is greater than secularism, Jesus is greater than every foe. Our God can work wonders. I need you to stand to your feet and give God about 10 seconds of praise, 30 seconds of praise. Come on, worship team, come and join me. All across New Zealand, our God's getting ready to breathe upon this nation. Our God's getting greater, getting ready to cover New Zealand in revival fire. The nations are ready. Come on, when the earth begins to shake, when things prove uncertain, when you don't know where your next meal coming from or whether you have job security, there is a name that is stable. There is a rock of the ages. There is a Jesus who is available to each and every person in our nation. Come on, New Zealand, let's believe. Come on, arise, let's join our faith together. One can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. Well, what can 10,000 people do if they united together with a common vision and a belief in the power of Jesus? Come on, give your God about 10 seconds of praise. You're not, open up your mouth, tell the devil you've had your season. Tell every principality and power, you're not getting our generation. We're praying in a hope for every teenager. We're praying in a revival on university campuses. We're praying in the restoration of marriages. We're praying in freedom from addictions. We're praying for the God of second chances. We're praying for the God who welcomes one and all. We're praying for the God of visions, dreams, and destiny to be birthed in the hearts and lives of people. And we welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Jesus. Imagine, arise. Imagine. Can you see it? Can you see the power of our God moving upon our nation? Can you see the nations of the world being one into God's kingdom? Can you see the greatest move of God our nation has ever seen? Imagine arise. Let us join together as bold dreamers. We see the nation of New Zealand covered in revival fire. I've seen it since I was a child. Every time I pray, I see those flames. Our nation needs Jesus, friends. With each one of us together united, we can do the most amazing things for God. You're out there saying, John, I have a gift of hospitality. What can I do? You can do what you do. You can be who God's called you to be. Because if you bring your hospitality, and that person brings their passion for prayer, and the next one of us brings their creativity, and the next one brings their leadership, and the next one brings their strategy, and the next one brings their service, and the next one brings their teaching gift, and the next one brings their gift of evangelism, then together arise, we can be the church. We can impact a nation. We can change the world. We can see the name of Jesus lifted high. And so we believe together. We believe together.